Brent Hubbs right now. I want to welcome on a, a really, really proud uh, you know friend of the show, but one of the better quarterbacks in Tennessee football history. That is Heath Schuler. Yeah, the guy who changed the landscape of football recruiting for Tennessee fans uh, and for all of us in terms of, of how uh, football recruiting was covered at Tennessee. He was the first guy that everybody asked every day, what's Heath Schuler going to do? Um, and uh, obviously he came to Tennessee, had a great career. We got uh, got his son on the team, got his daughter on the dance team. We got generations upon generations of Schulers running through the tee. Heath, welcome, my friend. Uh, welcome hey, to the season, buddy. It's, hey, it's always great to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's got to be exciting for you just to start a football season in general, but to have both your kids involved and in, in, in what's going on on the hill has got to be pretty exciting, doesn't it? You know, it, it's one thing to have Tennessee back where we're, where we need to be in the SEC hunt uh, for the championship game, and um, you know now to be able to have both my kids run through the tee at the same time, it just you know no one's been more excited about this upcoming season than I have been. Heath, I got to ask you. I mean, let, let's go to the player perspective a little bit right now. You've been where Joe Milton is at. Uh, the, the the anticipation, everybody talking about you, a buzz around you the, the entire offseason. What does this week feel like? What are the challenges for Joe, do you think, heading into this season? Look at that young Look at that guy. Here. Look at that guy rolling right there, man. Is that well, you? Age, it's amazing what 30 years will do to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what what's going through Joe's head? I mean, is it is it really business as usual? Does it feel different? How do you how do you think he is compared to maybe how you were feeling when you went into that that really second year where there was so much hype around right. you? Well, I think it's harder for Joe than it is just because of the the amount of media attention and social media and things like that. I mean, and, you know, I mean, sports is really kind of elevated. You know, it, it, it it's everyone's focus. So, you know, even though I think it's more, I think Joe is the type of quarterback and understanding the most important thing he can do is to kind of block all the noise out and really kind of focus on the task at hand and really look at the, you know, what the future can lead, not only for him, but the Tennessee team and have a chance to play for that championship game. And, and the best way to do that is to, you know, have that single-minded focus, really kind of hone in on, on uh, one team at a time, one game at a time and, and prepare for Virginia the best way he possibly can. Heath, when you look at Joe Milton, of course, he you know was a starter at Michigan. He came to Tennessee, started the first couple of games. He's kind of taken the back seat. He's been a great teammate. He's been a great role model and, and studied. Hendon Hooker was a sponge with him and an extra set of eyes. Now he gets the keys again. What about his game do you think that uh, he'll add that, that just can enhance this offense that's trying to pick up, of course, it was number one in the, uh, the entire country last year? Well, I think having – another shot at it. I think that's what he's been really kind of striving to is get that next shot. He had that during the bowl game, which was pretty incredible to watch how he performed in the bowl game. I think that was kind of a prelude to, you know, this upcoming season. Um, he's more mature, obviously. I mean, he's, he's older, he's been through it. Uh, you know, people want to say, well, he's, you know, may not have the experience. I think it's just the opposite. I think that he's, he's, um, He's gained experience while he was at Michigan. He gained experience uh, in, a, in a few games uh, his soft retro junior year, I guess. And then, you know, really having last year and at the end of the season when Hendon got hurt to be able to kind of pick up the pieces and kind of run with it to the end of the season. So he's had those games under his belt. And I think just the maturity level that Joe has, um, I think it's going to set him apart from a lot of others. So when things do go wrong, I think he realizes how he has to reassess and kind of the – you know, I always tell all those young quarterbacks I coach, you know, tee it up and hit it again. You know, you can't worry about that last play. And I think that he has that mentality. And it certainly helps that you, your offense goes so fast, you don't have time to worry about what happened on the last play. But I think it just the maturity level that Joe has and, and his real focus that he's had on the offseason and things that he's done, I mean, altered a little bit of his throwing motion. I think that helping kind of the, the touch balls and, and, and really be conscious and aware of, you know, how to place the ball. We all know he can throw it hard and, and throw it through a, a receiver. But the most important thing is what I have seen in the offseason, just his ability to kind of, you know, make every throw now, not just the long ball, but to really make every throw possible. 
Heath, how, how challenging is that? I mean, look, your your arm was really strong. Maybe you didn't throw it 87 yards or, or whatever. But, I mean, it, it's pretty legendary, the velocity you threw the ball with. How, how hard is it to develop a touch, to, to develop the ability to, 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 to have the consistency, you know, in, in some of that underneath stuff and, and, and all those types of things? Yeah, I think it's a learning curve. I mean, I, I certainly went through it my freshman year. I mean, I felt like every throw had to be a, you know, just throw it as hard as you possibly could, and that's the receiver's responsibility to make the catch. But in reality, it's still the quarterback's responsibility to make a very catchable ball and put it in a place that, that uh, you know, that, that it's going to be successful for the next you – know, to move the chains. So I think that's what he's really kind of had able in this offseason and really kind of the, even last season he really worked on that. You know, didn't have the overthrown balls, didn't have those challenges. And, um, you know, he had, now it has the complete package. People don't realize how, how well Joe does in the classroom. And I think just knowing and understanding the game and, and, and the, the contents of which the, the game is being played and, and what's expected of him from a quarterback is just getting all that and he, he understands it and knows it then it allows him to kind of focus on the things of, of making the touch passes and kind of the anticipation uh, of what the throws need to be rather than just feeling like I've got a strong arm, I can fit it in that hole or I can gun it, when in reality sometimes a nice easy touch ball is easier for the receiver and allows the receiver to get open better and, and a more chance of success. Heath, I hear this notion from time to time from, from outsiders, people around the country, you know, they've got an off season to figure out Josh Heupel's offense, you know, <laughs> that, that, that they, that, you know, there's a, they're getting a book on it, right? George has got the book on it for everybody to follow or whoever. Why is it hard to get a book on this offense? What's the challenges defensively that, that when you watch this offense and you see it go, that you go, man, that, that that's going to work year in, year out. There's nothing fluky about what these guys do offensively. Well, I think certainly while defensive coordinators are trying to figure out what's happening, that uh, um, Coach Heupel and his staff are actually preparing of what's the next wrinkle to go into the offense. It's not just, you know, we're going to continue doing the same things every single year. People do catch on to certain aspects of, the, of your offense. And so, you're, you know, they're sitting over there. He and Joey are sitting over there, and they're actually going through their offense, and, and they're trying to find new wrinkles and new ideas and – you know, the hardest and challenging thing for defense is how do you create that tempo in practice? How do you know, how do you how do you get, you know, teams? And I've heard teams saying they had they ran kind of two platooned offenses trying to get the team, the, the plays off in time. But, you know, you can't spend your entire offseason just working on worrying about one um offense or you know how you're going to play them i mean you, you may try some different wrinkles and pressure and you know i think you know people want to say that um you know georgia had our number well they had some pretty good talent you know it's you know you they can yeah. say that it was defensively a great scheme yeah it probably was but let's just say this they had some really good talent on that defense there's a few guys playing in the nfl this year that's making a pretty big impact in this preseason Heath, is it fair to say this in terms of preparing, if you're an opposing team, in terms of preparing that week for Tennessee's offense, it's it's almost like going up against a an option offense because you don't see anything like it all year long, but you've, you've got to try to practice against it. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, uh, who is it, uh, Navy, there's, you know, I mean, you look at uh, people don't like playing University of, you know, the Navy Academy yeah. because they run that option. And it's kind of like, you know, how do you prepare for one game a season Brent, I hope I hope I got that, Eric. I hope I got that team right. But I think they kind of yeah. run the offense. Yeah. And and yep. most teams don't want to prepare an entire, you know, they can kind of embarrass you. And I think that's what Tennessee's done is that fast break offense. And they kind of, you know, you don't fall asleep out there defensively because they're going to find the open guy and the busted coverage. And when the busted coverage happened, that's what Hendon was so great at. Hey, when you bust the coverage, it's over. We score. And um, and so you know, that's always the challenge. And I think, you know, Eric, you, you, you said it well. It's it's hard to prepare for them, and it's it's because there's not a whole lot of offenses like this. But I don't think it's one of those gimmick offenses. I think along the way there's been some offenses that say, oh, it's just the system, and the system works. Well, you know, I think that you're seeing it with Jalen Hyatt and some others that are playing in the NFL this year. It's it's not just the system. It's a pretty good athletes on the field and that Tennessee's been recruiting the last couple of years. And and getting the right mix along with the offense of which uh, 
and the defense of which we're having. So um, I think it's going to, you know, for this season's perspective, I mean, I think teams are still going to, you know, I think they're going to, it's going to be difficult and challenging on me. It's going to, it's not going to be easy on defenses. I think every, they, every defensive coordinator probably looks at their schedule and says, you know, Tennessee's the one that I dread the most. Yeah. Now, the last two years, this has been Hendon Hooker's football team. And Joe Milton was still a leader, and everybody says Joe Milton was still a leader last year and everything, but he was playing, you know, second string. Everybody you talk to, coaches, players, whoever, say this is now Joe Milton's football team. As yes. a former quarterback, how does that transfer of power happen over the offseason? Is it as simple as, all right, next man up? Is it within workouts, meetings? Is it the way he carries himself? How did this be go from Hendon Hooker's team to now Joe Milton's team? I think it's the confidence. Uh, uh, you know, the, it, you know, you can fool a lot of people, but the one group that you can't fool is your offensive line. And when that offensive line has confidence, you're making the right calls at the line of scrimmage. You're getting out of the bad calls, putting us in the right situation. And when you're making the right throws and you're making those completions and you're you're throwing the ball with touch now, you're not throwing over a receiver. When you're you, you can start looking a multitude of, of boxes that that Joe Milton continues to check, and when he checks them, the team surrounding him kind of says, "Wow, this guy's special." And so once you gain that type of support of your your team, and I always say it starts with the offensive line. You've got to have support of your offensive line first, and then you know the receivers. You're going to have that as long as long as you throw them the ball. You'll have <laughs> you'll have the support of your receivers, but you know it really starts with those guys up front having confidence, and then that becomes and it carries over to the defensive side. I mean, you know, players talk, they have communication, they talk with one another, and say, hey. Man, it's unbelievable what Joe did today. Or, hey, I'm glad he got us out of that check. And and defenses see it, right? I mean, they're watching the same, especially during spring ball and and fall camp. They're looking, saying, you know, you know, they're watching how well Joe performs. And then when you're performing well and you conduct yourself with the right way, I mean, I think that's important too. Then you ultimately end up having, you know, a, that's kind of the keys to success of of leadership for Joe and him being the leader of the team. All right, Heath. Last thing for me is. Um... Is this a long week for Joe? Is this a fast week? How, as a player, was this week like the longest week of the year? Or was this like, hey, we're out of camp, glory be, I'm not going against, beating my head against my same guys every day, and, and you kind of get settled in. How does this week go? Well, I think this is a, a start of a new season where Joe is the quarterback. So I think it's going to be a long week for him. The anticipation and wanting to get to Saturday is um, – it can't come fast enough for him because, you know, although at the end of the season he was able to you know, pick up the last couple of games and performed extremely well, you know, certainly that Vanderbilt game and, and challenging conditions all game long played extremely well and then followed that up in a great bowl game against Clemson. But this is his team, his season, start to a new year. So – I think no one is looking more forward to the first game than Joe Milton is. And I think he's going to go out and perform extremely well. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I would like to see Joe kind of run the ball and kind of get the nervousness out of him and saying, OK, it's game time. It's been a long time since uh, uh, last January. And it's and just kind of settles him down and gets ready to, you know, perform and perform at a really high level. Heath, my man, we appreciate it. Thanks for all, all the right, insight. Thank you guys. Appreciate and, it. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the week. Enjoy uh, having all the kiddos at the ballpark. It should be a lot of fun for you guys, man. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, guys.